Hello and welcome to this video on the acids and bases topic. Now this one's one of the bigger ones in Chem 4 and it's quite likely the calculations on buffers will probably be the bane of your life if you are not particularly good with maths. I'm going to split this video up into two parts. First part I'm going to hopefully get most of the theory out of the way and then the second part I'll do some more of those calculations since there's a few various ways they can be asked and it's more just getting the hang of actually looking at what information you've got and what they are asking from you. So as I said, theory to start what off, off with. So acid and base, we'll be looking at the Bronsted Lowry definition of it. So there are a couple of definitions. You will just be focusing on one of them. So it's all to do with the hydrogen ion, the H+. So an acid will give it away. So things like hydrochloric acid, they will try and give away H plus to something. A base, conversely, will try and accept H plus. So very easy definition, couple of words at most. Um, I'll give an example. So we will say... So here we've got ethanoic acid and water reacting together. So what you need to look at is the ethanoic acid here. Do not always be fooled that it's got acid in its name. If you react two acids together, then the stronger acid will force the weaker one to act as a base. So yes, it's helpful, but it is not always true that just because something is called an acid, that it is acting as an acid in the reaction. Water can act as either an acid or a base, depending on what's put in it. So we're starting here, as you can clearly see, when it's going to the product, it is giving away H+. Whereas the water, quite clearly, can be seen to have picked up the hydrogen ion. Now what they can also ask of you as well is, across here, are these acids or bases? These will be called the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Easiest way to sort of work this out, you can see here it's an equilibrium reaction. So you can go forward, you can go backwards. So just pretend now that you're sort of looking here, going backwards. So we're starting with CH3CO minus there. As you can clearly see here, you've picked up H plus to turn from this into that. So that is now a conjugate base, and likewise across here, the hydronium is acting as a conjugate acid. And there are a couple of other words to get your head around with the definitions. So strong and weak and concentrated and dilute. So strong is not the same as concentrated. A strong acid is something which almost completely dissociates in solution. So what I mean by that is, as you can see here, you've got the equilibrium symbol. A strong acid will pretty much be almost one-way traffic. So an example there, the hydrochloric acid, if you put that into solution, it almost completely breaks up into this form. Whereas a weak acid tends not to. So it would usually stay across this side and it doesn't really break up into the ions. So a weak one doesn't really release many H+. Concentrated and dilute, these are the words which you should be fairly familiar with. So these are the measures of the molarity. So a 0 0.01 molar solution, pretty dilute. Whereas a 5 molar solution, then you're getting up to the more concentrated range. So these are not the same. Likewise, these are not the same. You need to make sure you don't get your vocabulary messed up.
Now we're talking about acids and bases, you've all seen the pH scale, or what is the pH scale? It's a measure of the concentration of these, the hydrogen ions. It's a logarithmic scale. What I mean by that is rather than just using numbers which are really big or really small for measuring the amount of these, they just take a log function and get them down to manageable numbers. So you've seen between sort of 0 and 14, you can break that range. So if you start doing some calculations and get 14.9 or negative 1.2, they are probably correct if you've followed an actual method. Um, so with it being a logarithmic, what it means is that every number is actually 10 times more concentrated or dilute than the one around it. So a pH of 6 is 10 times more concentrated than pH 7 in terms of the amount of those. And likewise, pH 7 is 10 times more concentrated than pH 8. Um, I'll go on to doing the strong acids. So there are a few equations which you need to remember for this. Now, be careful with your brackets here. You can lose marks if you just put a curly bracket. Square brackets, you should remember from previous units, means concentration. So the pH is minus log concentration of hydrogen ions. This P, whenever you see P appear in things, since you can see PK and such, which we'll come on to, the P just basically means minus log. Right, so it'll say if you try to remember a couple of equations, if that's all you remember. P is minus log of something. Um, so I'm not going to bother doing one of those. All I'll say is when you encounter um, a strong acid like that, phosphoric, be careful with the amount of hydrogen ions that it releases. So when it actually splits up there, you can see with having 3H there, when it almost completely dissociates in solution, whatever concentration you've got here, say it's one molar, because of the fact you've got three times the amount being released there, you would actually have a three molar solution of hydrogen ions. So you would put your three in there and do your minus log function of it. You can be given the, the concentrate, well, you can be given the pH and asked to work out the concentration of hydrogen ions. You need to use the anti log function on your calculator for that. In other words, shift log. Probably, I think, applies to most of them, especially the Casio ones. Right, now the strong bases. You can work out the strong base as well. It comes from using the following equation. Well, I'll go through the bit of theory first about how it came about. So water can dissociate like that. That's not the exact one, but it's a simplified version of what you'll, what you'll see. As you can see, it can split up into the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion there. Now in terms of what you've seen when you've been doing the previous units with sort of the KC, you should remember hopefully it's products over reactants. Some exam questions are a bit picky by the way in terms of writing AQ and EQM for at equilibrium there. I personally never bother myself, but keep an eye out if the question mentions specifically it wants it, otherwise don't drop marks on it. I think it's just being pedantic for the sake of it. So as you can see here, this equation comes out, Kc product over reactants. Now the concentration of water never changes, it's constant. So what we can do, just take this constant value, put it across here. What we end up with is just rather than using Kc times this constant number, that becomes called Kw. So the Kw here, you need to remember that number. 
1 times 10 to the minus 14. It should hopefully be clicking a little bit in your head. pH 7 is when these are equal. So when you've actually got the 7 and the 7 together, I know I'm just sort of being a bit jumbly with the numbers, but the minus 14 there is where it comes from. When the concentration of these are actually equal, because the times 10 to the minus 7 times 10 to the minus 7, when you multiply the, the actual powers together, obviously they add, and that's where the minus 14 comes from. So in terms of a calculation, you can be sort of given the concentration of a strong base, for example, potassium hydroxide. So say I've got a... One molar solution of potassium hydroxide like that. Well, I know, and it says calculate the pH. So I know my Kw. I know my concentration of the hydroxide ion because one OH ion released per molar of this solution. So one molar concentration in there. All I would need to do, one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by one would give me the value there. So now that I know my concentration of hydrogen ions, you just have to put it back into the equation what you saw before. With the pH equals minus log concentration of hydrogen ions. So that's how to use the, the strong base ones. That, that's not particularly difficult. A couple of practice questions for that and you should be fine. Okay, next bit. So looking at the, the strong acids, the strong bases, those ones are quite straightforward. It's the weak acids and then going into the buffers, which tends to get a bit tricky with the actual numbers. So you'll see the equation for a weak acid simplified to looking like that. So as you can see, every time you've got one actual mole of the weak acid, some of it, not all of it, will dissociate. So a weak acid only partially dissociates. So very few of these will actually break up into that. But as you can see, every time you get one of these, that it's a chance it could break up to give you one of the hydrogen ions and one of your actual salt form there, the negative ions. So again, you can write an equation for that. So Ka is just called the acid dissociation constant. Exactly the same as Kc in that it's product over reactants. As such. It can be simplified even further. If you think about what I just said, every time one of these dissociates, you get one of these and one of these. Now questions will usually just be asking you to work out the pH of a weak acid. That means what we need to find is the concentration of H+. It could give you limited information. May It'll probably not bother telling you this. Why? Well think if these are equal, whatever number this is, that will be the same if it's dissociating. So again, this equation you could sometimes see in the form of that, H plus squared, because these will be equal. So in effect, it's just multiplied by itself. Um, if I just get some numbers. So if we say Ka is minus 5, now this value down here, because a weak acid only partially dissociates, in other words very little of it will be used up in turning to this, 
then the value for the concentration which you are given at the start, so say for example 0.15 molar ethanoic acid, that will be unchanged because all it's going to drop to is probably 0 0.1499999 and it's very irrelevant that small number. Okay, so there we have it. It's an actual equation. All we would need to do, multiply this over. The one mistake I expect people will make time and time again, you will forget to square root the value you will get across here. Once you've done that, got your concentration of H+. Plus. Again, back into that equation, and that will work out the pH of a weak acid for you. Okay, we'll stop there. Now I want the next video where we'll look at the buffers.